Hey guys, it's Stacy from My Petite Garden. Welcome back. Since it's the end of the year, I wanted to do a recap in this video highlighting the plants in my collection that deserves a little bit of a shout out because this has definitely been quite the year for me personally. As some of you may know, I gave birth to my son earlier in the summer and shortly after there was a period of neglect for my plants where a lot of them suffered but there were also those that stayed resilient and was patient with me. So hopefully this will give those of you who are in the market for some strong and resilient plants yourself some ideas and inspirations. The first plant I want to talk about is this Tuscadia cherry. This is hands down one of my favorites right now because throughout this whole time, it has been super easy going. I never repotted this plant after I bought it earlier this year. I actually unboxed this plant with you guys in one of my videos. So I'll put a card up in the corner if you guys are interested in seeing what it looked like when I first unboxed it. I was actually a little bit shocked at how much it has grown after looking back at the footage. This plant hangs by my west facing sliding doors and it seems to really enjoy it here. It gets mostly afternoon sun and during the warmer months when the sun is a bit stronger I do notice that some of the foliage do get a little orange red color from sun stress. And as for watering, I only watered this about once a week or a week and a half and very sparingly. During the period of neglect where I wasn't able to really keep up with the watering, this plant didn't seem to be too bothered with the inconsistent watering, so I do highly recommend this plant if you are looking for an easygoing Discidia. The next plant is the comeback kit of this video. A lot of you may be familiar with my Passiflora trifasciata that I love so much. I'll insert a photo of it at its prime. It was so beautiful and luscious, and this is currently what it looks like. It still looks beautiful to me, don't get me wrong, but it's just not as large and full as it once was. Now, this is a plant that requires frequent, consistent watering, so when I skipped waterings, I already knew that this plant was going to be unhappy. Almost all of the leaves turned brown and crispy and fell off. I finally made the decision to chop the whole plant back and see if anything will grow back. It didn't have high hopes, but shortly after it got the chop, the plant started sprouting new growth. This is not the easiest plant to care for, but it is most definitely resilient, and it does not require a lot of light in my experience. I have it growing by my north window. I honestly got pretty emotional when I saw that this plant did not give up on me, even though I failed to care for it properly for a while there. It gave me hope while I was recovering from a very challenging postpartum period of time. So in a way, I was really grateful for this plant and I think um, it will always remain in my collection no matter what. And I obviously have to mention my huge variegated Euphorbia lacteas. It was really no surprise to me that these guys proceeded to thrive throughout this whole time because like a lot of Euphorbia and cacti, they really don't fuss much about a lack of watering, which makes them perfect plants for those that want to set it and forget it. These guys are absolutely gorgeous and they have grown into such gorgeous beasts. And I'll insert a photo of them when I first got them, and to me, they looked like little babies compared to what they are now. Um, as for lighting, I have these sitting by my east-facing bay window. It is constantly putting out new growth no matter what season it is, it seems like for me. Um, and you see here the greener portion of it at the very top is the new growth. And you'll see it all over the Euphorbia on this one and the other one as well. So it's really nice to see something that grows all times of the year. Next is a plant that you guys saw me propagate in a recent video, um, and it is my Philodendron Mykins. This plant has been through so, so much um, from our move almost exactly a year ago 
where it lost a whole bunch of leaves due to the stress of moving and then the middle of this year when I neglected it, it continued to thrive. I was pretty surprised. Aside from some dried leaves, it really wasn't too bothered to be honest. Um, I have this hanging in my son's nursery facing an east window and I'll insert a photo of what it looked like in May of last year, um, 2020, which was I think a couple months after I first got this plant, so you guys can see how much it's grown. This here is my philodendron Florida ghost. Now believe it or not, I actually started this plant from a wet stick that was a cutting from my mother plant that I have since sold when we were preparing for our move last year. I really wasn't expecting much to happen with this. I had it rooting in water for well over half a year and it really didn't do anything. And then it finally rooted shortly after we moved into our new house. And then not long after it started putting out leaf after leaf. Now none of the leaves it puts out now are white um, and as you guys may know what makes a philodendron florida ghost so special is that the new foliage emerges as a cream white color and then as the leaf matures it slowly turns into a mint color and then into a full green. I'm hopeful that maybe it will put out a white emergent leaf for me when it's ready because the mother plant did have beautiful cream emergent foliage um, and I'll have a picture here hopefully of what the mother plant looked like. Right now I'm just happy that the leaves are getting more and more mature in shape and size. And I know I definitely need to repot this guy into a larger pot once this leaf is done unfurling. As for lighting, I currently have this one growing on my plant shelf in our bedroom under grow lights. Next is my Ripsalis pilocarpa. I really wanted to give a shout out to this one because it is just a tough, unbothered, independent plant. I have not repotted this for years and I honestly water this when I remember to and it still continues to grow in its own quirky way. This remains one of my favorite plants in my collection because it's just so weird and it can stand its own. Um, it currently hangs by my south facing window for those of you that are curious. Here you can see the new growth emerging and I think it's just so adorable. And last but not least, I have to talk about my Manchula pothos that survived the great neglect of 2021. <laughs> and it did bounce back like nothing happened. I was honestly pretty worried about these guys since I did see browning leaves and there were quite a bit of leaves that died off during that time period. I have two of these manjulas in my collection and every time my watering becomes a little bit inconsistent, I do notice that there will be brown leaves and once again, this is one of those that even though it might be unhappy and shows signs of it, it does and it will bounce back. The one that you see here is growing on my work desk um, in my bedroom facing the west window. And then I'll show you guys the one that's in our living room. And that one is actually pulled back from our west-facing sliding doors quite a bit, but it's doing actually better than the one here. So here is the one that's living in our living room, and it is actually doing 
really nicely. It's very full. Um, there are actually quite a few really long vines that I have to like twist and throw back on top. And I just want to show you this one vine in the back that has the most beautiful variegation. Um, it's like this really nice cream white and it's almost all white with just speckles of green. Alright, so that is actually it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I wish you all a wonderful new year. Stay safe, stay warm, and if you like this type of content, please remember to subscribe. Leave me a comment, leave me a like, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the new year in the new video. Bye!